I'm Mitch Marks, and later I'll be joined by my colleague Kurt Munson. We're going to speak on data processing for electric motor development. Now, in our electric powertrain, we have a battery, a high frequency inverter, and a motor. And we need to optimize these elements of the powertrain for range, durability, and experience. Off to Kurt. Thanks, Mitch. If we want to fully understand the performance and efficiency of that powertrain, we're going to need to measure some time series data. In the time domain, we're going to measure voltage, current, torque, speed, all kinds of things versus time. Now, there are a couple challenges with this. First is we're going to have to use a really high sample rate because in many cases, the fundamental frequency of the inverter may be in the tens of kilohertz range even. So what happens is then we end up with time series data that's in the gigabyte range. This is huge. But in measuring that powertrain data, that torque, that voltage, that current, that speed, and so on, this is good because now we're bringing data to the party. And the question then is, what do we learn from that time series data? Well, one thing we want to look at is efficiency. So we're going to take a look at what we call an efficiency map. And for every combination of torque and speed, and speed, we're going to calculate what's the efficiency of that conversion from electrical to mechanical power. And over time, if we collect enough of this time series data here at enough different unique conditions of torque and speed, we'll start to build up a map that maybe looks something like this. And further, we'll find that we have kind of shapes or islands in here of, say, lower efficiency, moderate efficiency, and high efficiency. So right away here, we're starting to quantify an important thing. We certainly don't want to operate in this condition right here. This is a low efficiency condition. So our motor control algorithm shouldn't push us in that direction. We don't want to operate that combination of speed and torque. But on the other hand, if we can control this thing in such a manner that we can operate at high efficiency, now we've improved performance and improved range. So this is a good thing. Another thing to keep in mind here is that we've now quantified the efficiency of one design. The same thing will happen now for design B. Okay, so that was design A. Now let's look at design B. Design A. So in the same way that we quantified design's A efficiency, we can do the same thing for design B. We may find that it's got a little different kind of island shape here because we have a different control algorithm or different hardware or something like that. But the really cool thing now is we can start to make these quantifiable comparisons. How will this impact the customer's performance expectation and how will it impact their range? We can quantify that. So that's our design A versus our design B comparison that we can, we can uh, bring to the table. Now, even within one of those designs, design A or design B, we can dig further. For example, if we were to look at some of these parameters now as a function of frequency, we may find that we have a big peak in the frequency domain at the fundamental, but also these harmonics, right? We call these harmonics. These harmonics can have, an, have, have a big impact on efficiency. So we need to keep track of that. We can begin to start thinking about once we quantify the degree of these harmonics, we can start thinking about maybe we can manage them. Maybe we can change the motor control strategy such that we emphasize or take energy out of certain harmonics. Again, recalculating efficiency plots and thinking then what is the impact of efficiency under these design changes. Furthermore, we can drill down and play other what-if games with different design scenarios. For example, we can look at that torque now. Let's look at that torque back in the time domain again. Torque in the time domain. Now, even under nominally static conditions, we have this, what we call torque ripple, okay? That torque ripple or cogging torque is inherent in just about any electric motor. The challenge here is that that torque ripple may cause challenges downstream. For example, the oscillating nature of it may lead to concerns with NVH. We may have unpleasant noises that result. Furthermore, it may lead to durability challenges. 
because that cyclic oscillation of torque is cyclic change of stress as well and may lead to durability concerns downstream. But the ENCODE tool set does allow us to dig into all these things, to understand efficiency, to understand NVH, to understand durability, and not just those things independently, but we have to recognize that the motor control and hardware that we choose in our design results in an interplay of these effects. And we want to be able to capture them all and understand how maybe addressing efficiency may have an impact on NVH. How can we optimize the solution such that we come up with the best possible performance? So what ENCODE software provides us here is the analytical capability to take this time series data, these gigabytes of measured high accuracy time series data, voltage and torque and such, and convert them into actionable insights, which means we can make our design better. Thank you, Kurt. HBK has some exciting solutions for collecting all that data with our eDrive Power Analyzer. The eDrive system allows us to collect large amounts of data for both electrical and mechanical signals so that they can be brought to post-process. The eDrive system has some additional benefits of taking measurements extremely fast. This allows us to spend less time validating and testing and more time understanding and making decisions. Secondly, the eDrive system is very dynamic. This means we can take measurements during transients, faults, or other conditions, allowing us to have additional insights for our development. Lastly, the eDrive system is incredibly accurate. This accuracy allows you to trust any results you're getting out of your equipment. Then these data can be processed using HPK's ENCODE software, which brings a couple of unique benefits. First off, this allows us to analyze that huge pile of time series data that Mitch just referred to. Secondly, with an analysis comes the ability to quantify. Quantify efficiency, NVH, and durability. And lastly, this enables us to make really unique engineering design comparisons, design A versus design B. With this HBK solution, you're able to take large amounts of data and turn those data into decisions. With that, engineers can develop better products and do it more quickly so you can get better products to market. Thank you for your time.